Let's get started. This is a Mead Autostar 497. This device is used to control the Mead ETX series of telescopes. And uh, this is a very old, old design. This is a very old unit. These are about 20 years old, and they are still very expensive, but uh, they can, they're still very useful for the Mead ETX telescopes. So what we're going to discuss today, you know, this is not my normal content on YouTube, but this was an interesting device and an interesting, uh, I thought, very elegant modification. And so what these devices are, these are used to control the ETX series of telescopes, and they also have an interesting function which you can uh, add. They have a, a serial port on the bottom, and using the serial port, you can inject GPS data into this device. You can reflash the firmware on this, which is very common, using the star patch firmware. And the star patch firmware has a GPS function which allows these devices to, uh, to receive and then interpret and then incorporate the GPS NMEA, NMEA messages. And use those messages to set the time, the date, and the location that you're operating your telescope at, and therefore speeding up the uh, the alignment process of your telescope and also making the alignment process of your telescope much, much quicker, more accurate, because you've got, you know, GPS location data, GPS time data down to the millisecond. So usually what happens is there's an external GPS unit that is plugged into this controller. And those units are fairly expensive, and they're you know they're kind of clumsy as far as I'm concerned with with having um you know all these cords around. So what I did was I decided what can I do? There are lots of inexpensive GPS units available on Amazon, and can I take one of those very common GPS units and adapt it into this case without modifying the case? And yes, yes, you can. So I thought I'd make a video on it. It's a pretty elegant little solution. It's pretty easy to do. This is using a GPS Neo 6M unit. These are about $9 on Amazon. Very inexpensive. This is the this is the unit right here. It's just a simple all-in-one little board. And then there's also included antenna. Just note, this is not the antenna that's included with this board. This antenna is larger. So the board's about 9 bucks. This separate antenna is about another $9. The antenna included with this one was just too small and was not nearly um, sensitive enough. So here we go. This is the inside of the Mead Autostar 497. This is an older Mead Autostar 497. This has a 24 pin display connector. There are two revisions of this board. This is the earliest revision. The later revision, the LCD connector is about you know, half this uh, width half this density, and the, the connector itself is offset like over to this side of the board. Uh, I believe both board revisions use this chip down here that we're going to discuss, and so this modification should probably work on the newer Autostar 497 board revisions. Okay, so again, in general, what we're doing here is we're taking a GPS, a, a, a RS-232 serial data line from a GPS receiver, and the goal is to pipe it in through this uh, this device, the serial port, and so that the Motorola 68 HC processor here can can interpret those those satellite serial signals. And so, what do we do first? Well, we need to get power. We need to get power to this unit first. There is a, a, a five volt voltage regulator up here that uh, you know is already doing the work for us. So there is a 5 volt rail on this board already. What we've done is we've taken, we've just found this convenient little location right here for both the 5 volt and the ground. We're just going to tap into this uh, capacitor here. The, the capacitor has a negative side and a positive side, and those those pads are tied directly to the outputs of this of the uh, voltage regulator up here of the LM317 voltage reg. So this is totally fine. Attaching our Power lines right here is is exactly the same as if we had just attached it straight up to the voltage reg itself. So, great place to, to locate our, our positive and negative feeds to our board. Works great. And then the only other thing is we need to take the output of this uh, GPS receiver, the serial the RS the, the serial output, and then find a good location to to uh, attach it to pipe it in to the you know to what this 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 unit expects, like where it expects to see serial signals coming in. 
So that's the interesting part of this discussion here. What we've done, I went through several, uh, several iterations of this in testing, and we have an interesting problem we have to solve because the the um, the output of our the output of our GPS the output of our GPS unit is a very specific uh, physical protocol. When we say physical protocol, we're talking about the actual voltages that are on the um, the actual voltages that are on the on the output wire. Yeah, so physical pro so every communication protocol starts first with the physical layer. And the physical layer on this GPS unit, it outputs a 3.3 volt to zero serial protocol. And it's inverted. So we have uh, logic zero is up here at 3.3 volts, and logic one is down here at resting it at zero volts. So this is a 3.3 volt to so that the signal just kind of bounces back and forth between 3.3 volts and zero volts and that will not work because that is not a valid RS-232 serial protocol. So if our if our goal was just to take the output of this and plumb it in, pipe it into the serial data line right here, which I tried, uh, if that's our plan, it does not work because we're not running the proper RS-232 serial protocol. A proper RS-232 serial protocol is, looks something like this, where we have a, this is our zero line, and it's, it's actually a negative voltage to a positive voltage, and it's a non-inverted signal. So we have, you know, logic zero is down here below zero, and logic one is up here at like 10 or 12 volts. So that's kind of a, it's kind of a bummer, right? We, we've, we've got it, we, we do have a serial output on from this GPS receiver, but it is not the physical protocol that we need, the physical line level protocol that we need. So we have to figure out how to navigate this problem. So one of the first things I did was, okay, let's take this, this uh, let's take this uh, serial line on this yellow wire and let's find uh, where on the board the serial data lines come in. So the serial connector is here and actually L1, right, as indicated right there, L1 is where the serial input comes in. And if we attach this yellow wire right to L1, well, it doesn't work. It doesn't work because it's not the correct protocol that we're expecting. So that doesn't work. So and another option was, well, let's take our serial line, let's take our serial line and just go straight to the Motorola processor. And this this pin down here in this corner is the input line for the ser for the Motorola 68HC processor. That's where it expects the serial input. That doesn't work either because we have a 3.3 volt to zero. We need actually what we need is is more of a 5 volt to zero to zero. That's what that's what the Motorola processor is expecting is 5 volts to zero, not 3.3. And that doesn't work either. So we had a we we're kind of running out of options here. I don't want to start adding you know, um, adding any kind of uh, circuitry to the system here because I want the solution to be elegant. So the solution it came up with is we're going to examine we're going to examine more closely this chip down here in the corner. This chip down here in the corner that I've got these wires on, this is an ADM232 chip. And if we pull up the, the data sheet, we see that the ADM232 chip is a RS-232 like line uh, transceiver. And what it does is it takes the RS-232 protocol from the serial input and converts it to the proper signal, uh, physical layer signal that the Motorola chip is expecting up here, that the Motorola chip wants to see. So, well, let's investigate further. And if we investigate this chip and how it's being used, only two of the data lines on this chip are being used. There are four total, and only two of them are being used. So that that is an interesting situation here. We have we've got we got a, a, an opportunity here. What we can do is we can use one of the data lines on this chip that is just sitting there completely unused. It's it, they're not connected. Any the pads on the on the, the the chip are not even connected to anything. So well, let's investigate if we can use it. And it turns out we can. We can completely use one of the data lines on this chip to shape our our, our uh, serial signal from our GPS unit. So we can use this chip to shape our serial communication signal from the uh, GPS unit, and it'll shape it to a proper RS-232 line level signal. 
So what we've done, I'll go ahead and post the schematic, um, but in general what we've done, and it's pretty straightforward, you're just going to follow with me here, what we've done is we've, we've taken our GPS, our GPS signal, our GPS serial out, and we've taken it and we've, we've attached it, and literally you just simply, we just simply soldered it onto, we just simply soldered it onto um, pin number 10, right here, this is pin 10, we take our GPS signal, we pipe it into pin 10 on our ADM232 chip, and pin 10 is labeled T2N. And internally what it does is it goes inside the chip and it does a bunch of stuff and it, it does some, some charge pumping and, and modifies the signal and it comes out on pin 7. And pin 7 is labeled T2 out. So when it comes out on pin 7, it is a properly formatted RS232 signal. And it actually, it, it, I can verify on the oscilloscope when we, when we, uh, when we pass in we pass in this signal here to pin 10, we get out a proper RS-232 signal, just like we'd expect. And so that's great. We're, 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 we're making progress. We've just, we've just modified our, our, um, our 3.3 volt our, uh, serial line, and now it's a proper RS-232 signal. And then next, what we need to do is we need to uh, find a way... We're just going to put this this uh, properly shaped RS-232 signal. We're going to take that signal, we're going to take a little jumper wire, and we're going to go right into pin 13, which is labeled R1N. Pin 13 is, pin 13 is the normal input pathway on this board for all the serial communication signals coming in from the outside world. So once we do this little jumper on this red, red wire, from from pin seven to pin thirteen, we've just taken our properly RS properly shaped RS two thirty two signal and piped it in the normal input pathway for this entire board design. So once it goes into pin thirteen, it goes back into the back into the chip, and it comes back out and, it, and it's routed up to the it's, then it's routed up to the Motorola sixty eight HC processor, and this works just great. As soon as we do that, then the the firmware detects the GPS messages. And then the firmware locks on to the uh, to the uh, location, the GPS location data and the GPS time data, and it works. It works great. So this is an interesting little modification. I think it's worthy of uh, sharing it with the world here. I thought it was a fairly clever, fairly clever modification. It's fairly inexpensive. It's pretty straightforward, and. I'll zoom in real quick and just show you again exactly what's going on here. So you can see the yellow wire comes in on pin 10, all right? And then we jump across the, the chip to pin 13, I'm sorry, to pin 7, pin 7 right there. And then pin 7, we have a jumper wire back to pin 13, and then we're done. And that's it. It's pretty simple. So let's talk about what it takes to do this job. Obviously, you're going to need to purchase the parts. And very inexpensive, about you know, nine to eighteen dollars or so, for all the for all the components that you need, the uh, GPS components to do this. But we also got to talk if to do this job, you're going to need to be comfortable with soldering. Uh, I you know you're going to have to have a really nice fine soldering tip to do the work. Decent solder, maybe a little bit of flux. Um, otherwise, it's not a terribly difficult job. But soldering can be intimidating for some people, especially when you consider these. These boards, these these units, the Mead Autostar 497 unit is is very expensive these days. Um, but you can do this job. It's it just it's just you got to take your time, move slowly, and um, don't do this if this is your first time soldering. Put it that way. Uh, otherwise, you know the job's pretty simple. I use some Kapton tape to you know properly kind of protect the circuitry below. Uh, from any axonal shorts, um, double stick tape, everything fits nicely underneath the case. I did not have to modify the case in any way. However, I did I did modify the case to put a I put a an LED window in there so I could see the LED on the um, so I could see the LED on the GPS board. Uh, a couple other modifications performed to this. Uh, I added a heat sink to the voltage regulator. The 
standard Mead 497 board takes a, uh, consumes about 70 milliamps of current, and that's fine. When you add the GPS unit, it adds about another 50 or 60 milliamps of current draw, so that gets this, this voltage reg a little bit hot. Uh, this board also has a replacement 24-pin LCD display. My original display was completely broken. I find what happens with these displays is the um, these traces inside the flex cable just dry out and they crack and you lose the display. So you have to get a replacement display. These replacement displays don't need the backlight anymore because of how they're manufactured. They do not have a translucent backing. They have a static backing. So <clears throat> you basically lose the backlight functionality. Because I lost the backlight functionality when I replaced the screen, I went ahead and removed a couple, I removed the uh, backlight LEDs. If you remove the backlight LEDs, um, that reduces the current draw on the system and this voltage regulator does not run hot anymore. Just uh, throwing it out there. If you've, if you've replaced your, your LCD screen, you, you don't need the red backlights anymore because they're, they're non-functional. So just go ahead and remove them. But this is a great little modification. Uh, I'm impressed with how it simplifies. I don't need you know an external unit. I don't need external cables. Everything's internal. Everything's really nice. One thing I will say that you absolutely must add that is not on this design as shown today. You must add a switch to interrupt the power on this GPS unit. And the reason for that is that you know this works great, but let's say you want to go update the firmware. And if you want to update the firmware on this device, or if you want to control your telescope using the serial cable with your PC, it won't function if you have this GPS unit powered up, because this GPS unit is constantly hammering out, blasting out serial messages on the serial line to the Motorola processor. And serial communication protocols don't work with multiple, multiple participants. You can only have you know, it's only a, a, a single conversation between two devices. You can't have a third device in there. If you do, it's just going to, all the messages will collide. There's no collision detection or avoidance on the on the serial protocol. So if you've got this GPS unit just firing off signals constantly, which it does, it will interfere with your attempts to communicate using any other serial device on this. So you must, you, you need to be able to turn this off, is what I'm saying. You need a switch on there. I just haven't found a good, a good, uh, a good switch to uh the, that that i want to incorporate into this design elegantly so right now it's just, and i've just been testing so right now it's just powered on but you need to have a switch to interrupt the power otherwise you won't be able to have any other serial communications going on um but otherwise i think it's a great little modification it works really well if we power it up you can see we'll see if we can get any of the uh, gps signals coming in probably not because i'm in the basement but Let's see, it should at least be receiving the signals, and it, it'll, it'll be receiving the GPS messages. Yeah, there we go. So when it enters this screen, it is receiving GPS serial communication messages, and it's looking for satellites to lock into right now, which it won't, because like I said, we're, we're deep underground here. Anyway, great modification. Um, hopefully everyone has, uh, this is enough information. I'll try to post some quick schematics real quick for you and some images, some static schematics and static images that you can look at. Thanks for watching.